because there are still buddies of mine that say, hey, I'm moving. Can you? Yeah. I got the pe- no. pizza and beer. I rented a U-Haul. Can I you know. come and help me? Outside of the box, one of my tips, frog box. I love frog box. What is frog box? They deliver containers, essentially. I don't know what you would call them, those plastic bins. You fill up your bins. And when you move and unpack them, they take the bins away. So you I never... don't see the value to it. I know I know you've always been a big fan of the, the service. Here's the value to it. There, you don't have to deal with taping. You don't have to deal with all the cardboard. How many boxes do you need? Whatever. The other benefit is that it forces you to unpack. Well, that's what I was going to say is, well, what if a lot of people don't unpack? Maybe they don't want to unpack. Unpacked. Well, then I would suggest those are things that you may not need. Probably. And well, and there's another tip is use this as an opportunity to purge and maybe have somebody else help you. There are a lot of people out there that struggle. It's also a great time to actually sell some of those things and make a few dollars because now you're going to spend money on moving. Yes. Why not make the amount of money by selling stuff that you can now use for your moving expenses? Yes. Well, we sold a house uh, recently. They actually closed um, in a few days. And their move is quite long or quite far, rather. A few hours and they didn't realize how expensive it was going to be to move some of their very heavy furniture so now right. they're like can we just give it away right and so stuff like that people need to take into consideration in, in advance yes yes <laughs> having uh, a lot of moving supplies so even if you are using a service like a frog box or if you go and you buy a whole bunch of bins at Canadian Tire or wherever. Bubble wrap. Moving blankets. Moving blankets. We bought a, a big box of them from Uline. That was a pretty good deal. That was a great deal. And One big tip I have for homeowners that I feel, I feel like when people sell their house, whether intentional or not, they start to disconnect from it as they plan for their next chapter in their life. And they start to neglect things around the house a little bit. You know, specifically things like maintaining the outdoors, like the lawns and the gardens. And this is why we do revisits with buyers closer to closing to make sure that the house is in more or less the same condition as when they purchased it. So just be mindful about taking care of the house. If it's going to be vacant, make sure you check in on it. Make sure your temperature is set to a reasonable temperature because if it gets super humid, your floors can start to buckle or, you know, have these unnecessary expenses and make for a bad experience yeah. for the buyers who are probably very excited to move in. So cut your grass, take care of the inside and the outside. Now you had a tip about Canada Post. Well, we it seems like a simple thing and it's probably on a lot of blogs or whatever. I mean, a lot of people probably suggest getting your mail forwarding done, but not a lot of people seem to do it. And we right. experience this a lot with uh, rentee, our property management company, with uh, landlords too, if they're moving and renting out their current house. It happens a lot in that side too, or landlords are forgetting to do it. And I think a lot of people, when I talk to them and say, hey, have you set up your mail forwarding? Have you set up your mail forwarding? They're like, no, no, but we've called everybody and changed all our addresses. Well, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Like there's going to be people you forget. There's going to be people you don't know. Uh, you're- Poor Aunt Betty sending you the Christmas card. Yeah. So just set up mail forwarding, pay for a year. At that point, you will have probably gone through anybody that's ever going to mail you something and you can get it updated. Some more tips for the actual moving day. Don't make the boxes too heavy. Your movers will not appreciate that. And if you can, move your boxes into the closest practical area to the front door. You're paying by the hour. You're paying by the hour. So if your boxes are nicely lined up in the front of the house, so the movers can just come in, grab the box, load it into the truck, you're saving a whole whack load of their time and effort. They'll appreciate it, which makes the move nicer. Would you use the service where they actually pack for you? I know a lot of people that do. and I'm not sure how we feel about it. 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want them packing my wife's underwear drawer, right. but the kitchen? Go nuts. Yeah. You want to pack my plates, my dishes, my... I would. Then you can hold them liable for it as well. Maybe. Sure, I don't know about that, but there are a lot of services. Well, people that move out of country use those type of things a lot. Um, I was going to say pets. Be mindful of your pets. And I have a, a story, a personal story from when we moved as children. We were younger. We moved once in our life, my life anyways, when we were kids. And shortly after we moved, we realized we couldn't find the cat. So we looked everywhere, looked all through the house, everywhere. There was one air duct return that was left open. So we thought, maybe, oh, maybe she got in here. We looked in there. She wasn't in there. Eventually, like two or three days later. Forgot we, her at the old house. No, no. We found her in, I think we found her in my parents' dresser in one of the drawers. <laughs> I don't know how she got in there or how we didn't hear her, but there she was. How long was she in the drawer for? At least uh, at least 24 hours, probably close to 48 hours. Wow. Yeah, long no, time. No food, no water, no, no litter food, box. No water. No, she nothing. was resilient. She lived wow. to 17. She was a good cat. Yeah, Whiskers was her name. So maybe, you know, have somebody take care of your pet for the day because that's a very stressful process. Yeah. So What about kids? Kids, uh, yeah, if they're not old enough to help. But I think at most ages, you can get them to help somehow, maybe. But it's going to slow you down. So if you would prefer not to be slowed down, then find somebody to watch them. Have a couple of bins that have all of... First of all, you got to stay hydrated and you got to eat. So have snacks, have Gatorade. Yes. Have things to keep energy levels up for people of all ages and then have a bin with supplies that you're going to need paper towel toilet paper cleaning supplies toys to keep the kids busy while you're trying to unpack like make sure that you know where certain things are ipads are gold when it comes to moving day with kids yeah so if they have an ipad let them use it for the day if, they, if you don't have an iPad, buy a used one. I think movers are worth their weight in gold too because they'll do things like reassemble uh, your bed. Sure. And get it all ready to go. Because who wants to be doing that Hire, at the end of the day before going Hiring movers is actually more cost effective than a lot of people think because there are still buddies of mine that say, hey, I'm moving. Can you? Yeah. I got the pe Fuck no. pizza and beer. I rented a U-Haul. Can I you know. come and help me? And Having a schedule is important. I think what happens is when people move into the home, they end up not I think, very... Right, what do we do now? It, exactly. So having a schedule, if you're moving on Sunday, mark it in your calendar, have a family schedule, put it right on the fridge. Monday night is the kitchen and unpack everything in the kitchen, get rid of those boxes, whatever kind of boxes you use. Don't delay it. I go and visit clients months after they've moved in and they'll still have one of the quote unquote spare bedrooms yeah. loaded with boxes and stuff. And life takes If you don't do it right away, takes over. you're just not gonna do it. Exactly, exactly, so. Another thing I would recommend for the, if, for people to do for the people moving into your house that you've sold. So for the buyers, the sellers, the new owners, the new owners, the previous owners should do this for the new owners. Provide some information, provide them with all the codes to your existing stuff. I know they can reset it, but it just makes it easier. Ooh, that reminds me. I want to reset to make, it yourself. I wanted to make a checklist that the team yes. gives our sellers to fill out for yes. us. And then for certain, like now with tech devices, you might need to uh, remove your access to it. I don't know what the right term would be. Like for Nest uh, thermostats or smart locks, you may have to uh, do a factory reset on it so the new owners can actually access it. Um, yeah, otherwise the new owners are going to be bugging their realtor. Their realtor is going to be bugging your realtor and your right. realtor is going to be bugging you to get garage code, where's the mailbox? The mailbox is another big one. It's always where's your where's mailbox? the shutoff valves? Yeah, what's that noise? 
And then for... Where's the remote? How do you turn on the fireplace? Yeah. Provide some instruction for things that, you know, you think people may appreciate assistance with. 